How's everybody doing? <laughs> hello, hello. This is an honor to be up here. Man. Um, yeah, I think I, 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 I'm going to start out by introducing who I am. Not everybody knows who I am. Um, and I think it's very important uh, I do so. But I also think it's very important that everybody in this group, you know, we've got to reach out and find out who's sitting next to us. A lot of times we're there on Monday nights, and we don't even know who's sitting next to us. You just know their face. And um, if we're going to function as a group, if we were playing soccer, right, we'd want to know each other and know how we function and how we move as a group because the goal is to get the, the soccer ball in the goal. I mean, we're, we're, all, we're all one one body moving in the same direction, and we don't have a 1,000 people here. And that's the goal. And if we can't communicate now, imagine this large group. It's going to be disorganized and... Uh, so I just, I exhort that we look around us and, and get to know people. And, you know, this idea of going to a coffee shop, I mean, it's $4, right, for coffee? Some places maybe a little more, I don't know. Um, but uh, we, do, we do need to go out and, and take people out and find out a lot of, there's a lot of problems uh, people have and um, we're not even aware of it, you know, until you take somebody out. And so, yeah. So uh, I'll, I'll begin telling you a little bit about who I am. Uh, my name is Roy Inman, and uh, I was born and raised in Midland, and uh, I spent the first 18 years of my life in Midland and grew up in a Christian household. Uh, mom's Catholic, dad's Methodist. I, I know a little bit about both, you know, and, and well, any, anyways, I've known, uh, I've spoken with God since I was four. Mom would take me to the library, and we'd watch all sorts of yeah, I'd get these VHSs back then. They had VHSs, and we'd watch these. And I even remember at the age of four saying, Mom, does Jesus always have to die? You know? I was just a little kid. I didn't know, man. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure she explained why. But, uh, and then at the age of 18, it turns out that I was baptized. Or I wasn't baptized, but my, my grandfather asked me. He said, are you going to, to heaven? And I said, I don't know, Grandpa. And Grandpa's a missionary. He was a pastor. And I didn't know the answer to that. So he said, all right, we well, got a Bible. So I ran in there, and I got mom's big, you know, thick Catholic Bible. And he flipped it open to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. And it says there, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that you'll be saved. And so then he prayed over me, and, and that was it. I knew it. You know, I was like, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, and that's what I, that was my go-to message when I was uh, in Costa Rica. So at the age of 18, I then go to Costa Rica. My mom's from there. And so I go over there. I go to medical school. Mom, mom booted me out of the house. She said, you're getting out, and you're going to go get a job, or you can go to medical school. We'll pay for everything. And I took the, the nice route there. I went to Costa Rica, but that wasn't easy. There was no pre-med. It was all in Spanish. I spoke a little bit of Spanish. But, uh, yeah, so I went over there and graduated, came back. And, uh, and then when you come back, everything is, is convalidated. Everything is accredited. Awesome. So everything's accepted here in the United States. And uh, so then what you have to do when you come to the U.S., you have to take these uh, board exams. And so that's for your specialty. And I took the step one. I passed that. And then as I was studying for my step two exam, it turns out I was doing 12 to 15 hours a day. And then all of a sudden I was on my knees and I was just fervently praying like I never have before. I was like, well, this is kind of crazy. And, uh, and then all of a sudden I got in the Bible and I began to devour large amounts of information. I've never been to seminary school and there was just, you know, 12 to 15 hours, you know, just a bunch of information, just devoured large amounts. And I was like, wow, this is just, just crazy. Things I'd never even heard preached before. Things, um, it's just, just amazing things. And so um, that's what I plan on sharing with you all is, is that, that information that the Lord shared with me. And um, yeah, there was one thing I did want to go ahead and mention uh, that I just remembered, and that is that um, I don't know if everybody's plugged in on Messenger, on Facebook, if you if you have Facebook, but uh, we we're talking about moving together and knowing what's going on, and and um, so it's very important we get plugged in. Uh, when we talk about uh, the head, we're all under the the headship of Christ, right? He's the head, we're the body. If there's any lack of communication within our group. In the medical field, we say it's paralysis. So if there's a lack of, 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 of uh, the message, the communication from one nerve to another coming from the, from the head, then we're, we're actually having some issues there. And so um, 
I don't know, it's very important. If you don't have Facebook, well, at least that we get your number and we get plugged in. There are things that we're doing right now, evangelism and, and moving outward, outside of the church walls, and uh, it's fun, it's exciting, and it's easy. And uh, the way that it works is that, um, I'll have to explain it like this. Uh, it turns out there's two boys they're little, right? They're five years old, and one of them, he winks at the little girls and stuff. You're like, whoa, look at this guy, right? He's a Don Juan, and he runs around, and he's playing with all the little girls, and you're like, well, this is kind of crazy. And But he's got a best friend. His best friend doesn't know anything about that. He's running around. He's kind of shy. He's timid, all right? So they go into their teens, and he's still chasing the ladies, and the other guy, he, he doesn't know what to do. He's timid. He's shy, and he grows up. So they, they get to become adults, and uh, the one that was a Don Juan gets married. He has kids, and the other guy, he never gets married. There's a problem with that. So does he like women? Let's say he loves women, but he never went to his best friend. You know, And so there, there, with, with, the, with the example we're talking about there uh, that the Lord shared with me, there are some people who are naturals at being an evangelist, and they know how to do it. There's no problem. They can walk up to anybody and just, hey, how are you? And then begin a conversation. And um, there's no excuse. We're one body. There are people in here. There, it's it's very easy for them, and um, the idea, you know, if we if you had these two guys there, he would go to his buddy, and his buddy would be like, "Hey, it's easy, man, you know, you shave your beard, man, you know, so women don't like that, you know, and try this cologne on, right?" And there's little tips and tricks, and they'll get us there. Uh, and so, but we got to sit down with those who know, and that's what that whole thing is when we do evangelism on Saturday nights. The idea is to get trained, equipped, and trained, and then move out. Maybe you're not a natural at being an evangelist. But that doesn't mean you don't share the gospel, you see? So that's very important. That's just the exhortation I'd like to make. And, um, and now I'd like to do, if we could do a little prayer, you know, before we, so, yeah. So dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we adore you, we honor you, Father. We do lift your name up high, Father. And Father, I'm just asking that you speak through me, Father. We, we can't do this without you. I can't do this without you. And Father, <laughs> we're just fully dependent on you. And Father, we thank you for the praise and worship. And thank you, Father, for the message. Thank you for the, even this whiteboard and all those that are here present. Father, we pray that you bless every word that comes out of my mouth, that it be your word and not mine. Father, we pray that you shut my mouth where my mouth needs to be shut, that no words come out that are not yours, Father. And Father, when the seed goes down into the heart, we pray that, Father, that it, it, it produce fruit, that it, it produce roots and fruit. And, and uh, we just pray that, Father, you direct my heart to speak however you wish and desire that I speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I didn't bring a script. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to see what the Lord wants to do. There's a lot of things. Uh, we're going to see how the Lord wants to move in this. Um, at one point, I, I gave all this revelation to a body. It took seven hours. Uh, so we don't have seven hours, so I'll have to try to compress it. And certainly that was, you know, going scripture by scripture. So I'm going to jump through that. We're going uh, to, I'm not going to give all of the addresses to everything that we talk about, but um, what I will reveal, see, like what, what I'm about to reveal to you, there's a lot of elementary concepts. This is all for foundation. If we don't have this, it's very difficult to move forward. And what we have currently, we have pastors, uh, they're leaving the elementary concepts for, you know, Sunday school. And then Sunday school, they teach about Noah and the ark and Jonah and the well and Adam and Eve and stuff like that. But we, we have to have a good foundation. The idea is that we all have a relationship with God through the Bible. And so um, if I could explain, it turns out that everybody knows that that's John 14, 6. It says no, it, Jesus is the truth, the life, and the way. No one gets the Father except for through him. And, and he happens to be uh, the Son of God. He happens to be the Word of God. And the Word of God is the Bible. It says so in John says so in Revelations 19, 13. It says Jesus is, his robe is dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. So the word of God is the Bible. So it, no one gets the Father except for through the word of God. It's the world, if we could look at the world itself, it's a big pile of hay. And, and you've heard of the, the, when we talk about the, the needle in the haystack, well, this is it. You found it. This is it. And, and many pastors today, they'll say, yeah, keep searching for God. Just keep searching. Uh, but, but here's where we, this is it. Once you find it, this is it. You put the word in your heart and you begin to, well, let me explain. So it turns out if we talk about Jesus is also the ultimate sacrifice, right? He's the lamb. So when we pick up the Bible. Uh, this is actual. This is actually the lamb right here. And so when we talk about the blood of the lamb, that's the Holy Spirit. In John 6, 51 through 55, it says there, he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. And my bread is real flesh. It's real food. And my blood is real drink. 
And unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there will be no life in you. So when we are in our Bible, we're actually having communion. We're actually, we're eating the flesh and we're, and we're drinking the blood. So the blood exactly, what is, it, what is going on is that what is written is then now spoken. And it speaks to our heart. It says there where your treasure lies, there to your heart lies. And so as this begins to happen, not that same word for communion is also fellowship. So that, that there is very important that you realize when we're having communion with Christ, which is the word of God, we're also having fellowship with him. And so um, the exhortation is to, to, to make sure that we realize that we're not just reading our Bible. People don't want to read their Bible. But if you know that you're having a relationship with God, then so you can go to a coffee shop, sit by yourself, open the Bible up, you're sitting down with somebody, you know? You're having a communication there with God. He's speaking to you. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so when that happens, it's rhema word, and then it goes in our hearts. It says that there's no way to please the Father except for by faith. And so, uh, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you're not in your Word, we're having a problem. And there's a lack of, of relationship. Many have actually, you'll speak to them, and for years they've never been in their Bible, you know. Um, so this is just kind of a, a, an idea to point. We have to have a foundation. Without that foundation, ISIS comes in, and they're going to cut your throat up. They're going to cut your head off. And you're just going to say, are you sure? Are you sure? You're going to say, well, I, I think my pastor said so. You, you, better, you better know because uh, we cannot deny him, right? So, um, let me see where the Lord would like to go. So what we'll do, we'll go ahead and, so what the Lord revealed to me is that um, if we talk about Mark, Mark uh, chapter 4, we have the sower and the seed. There's four different situations in that circumstances. And so we'll, well, I guess I'll see if this writes, maybe it doesn't, is it? Here we go. So when we deal with the first situation that we have there, it turns out that uh, that there's seed, there's seed that's scattered along the path. All right, and then there's also uh, some burn. This is this is the actual seed that goes into the heart. Okay, so there's seed that goes in the heart. That's your seed. It's the only place it mentions the heart. It's in the King James Version. Very important. And uh, But then the birds, they come and they eat it. And the birds are the, well, they're demons or they're evil spirits, right? They eat it. And it never, it never takes root. It never grows a shoot. It never produces fruit, okay? And then the second uh, one we're talking about, it's, it talks about rocky soil. In, or in other translation, it talks about hard soil. So we have hard soil. And the third one, we're talking about thistles or th thorns. And then this one is soft soil. So it's very important that we realize that the heart and the mouth, they're connected. The, the mouth and the heart are connected. Wherever you see a heart, look for a mouth. Wherever you see a mouth, look for a heart. But in this context, what we're dealing with is, it says there in the Bible, it says where your treasure lies there to your heart lies. So when we're in the Bible, when we're actually feeding, we're having communion, we're introducing the word of God in our heart. That, that right there, that's going to be our seed. That, that, that grandpa spoke to me. He spoke to me, Romans chapter 8, verse, uh, or rather 10, verse 8. Um, actually, that was 9. When he spoke that to me, it says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and uh, you believe with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that you'll be saved. There's, there's, there's an understanding there. It's in Isaiah. It says, he basically, uh, he's speaking, and he says, you know, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. So the thing starts here in the heart, and out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. So if we talk about that, uh, Romans, I'll just write it, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. In the 8th verse, it says, it says this, that the word is both in the mouth and in the heart. That's what it says. And then it says, and this is the message that we proclaim about faith. Everybody's heard about faith. That if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that you'll be saved. I'll have to speed things up. <laughs> okay. 
Mopud Singh. So, so if we have this, this understanding, everybody knows it's by faith. It says there, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, it says, for we are saved by grace through faith. Okay, grace is unmerited favor. So we talked about that. This is very important that we realize if we talked about the understanding behind grace is what the Lord gave me. Turns out we're all surfers. We're all on board and we're above water. You don't want to be underwater. All right, you want to be on top of the water. So we're surfing and you lose your balance and you fall for a second off the board and you step off the board. When you're stepping off the board, you're, you're, that's grace. All right, we're not supposed to step off the board and wander off. That's grace. But we're in, in the idea of faith, we have to understand that faith without lordship is not faith because essentially if another word for Lord is master so here it is you've got a remote control car and it's down on the ground and you're looking at it it says Jesus is Lord and it's it's covered in it's red we'll just say and you're looking at it and you're like wow okay look at that thing that belongs to Jesus right there and you look and you look to the left and there's God he's got a remote control car and he's got the remote to the car it's toggle switch and he moves it forward the thing goes backwards he moves it backwards, the thing goes forward. Everywhere God tells it to go, it doesn't go. It turns out that that has no connection with God. And God will say, away from me, you evildoer, for I never knew you. So without, if, you, if you're just going to give lip service, we're, we're, we're in big, deep trouble, right? So there has to be, it has to start here, in the heart. And so when somebody actually quotes this Romans 8 through 10, what they're doing is there's an actual seed that's placed. Unless, I do believe there can be a miracle where this actually turns into basically this and we're dealing with fruit and if you want the the, the mouth and the tongue are inter interchanged by the way so that's just so you know it um, <laughs> but uh, so what we're dealing with here it for, when the seed goes into the heart that's you that's you declaring that Jesus is Lord you just declared it but you don't fully understand that there has to be understanding right and and when we talk about this hard soil see it turns out that in this uh, particular portion of the parable, it says that the seed did not uh, produce deep enough roots. And so the sun came, it scorched it, it withered it, it died, it didn't make it. So you have to realize that without roots, it will not survive. The first step, and the Lord took me off the page of the Bible into botany, plant biology, and it just so happens that the first stage of a seed is dormancy. Do we understand what dormancy is? It means to be asleep. So Jesus says, be, you know, be dressed and ready with your candles lit. And he's talking about the candles for the nighttime. Don't be asleep. You know, let me catch you sleeping. And, and he'll come like a thief in the middle of the night. So uh, we, this is the beginning right here. Many of, these, uh, many of these churches are preaching this. You've got a bunch of seed. They're scattered all, all around the place. And they're saying, well, I'm saved. And then they're crying out to God saying, I don't understand this. This is really messed up. My life is not going well. And it's not going well because, well, there's still a seed. And the pastor keeps saying, well, you're a plant. But they're not a plant. Okay. Maybe they're a plant, but they don't bear fruit. That's going to be this third, the, <laughs> this third one where the thorns choke up the plant and they don't produce fruit. Um, so anyways, so here's what we're going to deal with. We're going to go ahead and talk about this. The actual seed, it's in its dormancy phase. First phase. The second phase here, is, it's called the radical phase. Sounds kind of crazy because we talk about, you know, radical Muslim and all this. But that's, that's your radical phase. It's the, it's the phase when the actual root kicks out. And we began to develop roots. Well, how do you develop roots? Well, it turns out, I'll explain it like this. So your roots are you digging in the word. Your roots are equivalent to your faith and how much you know you're rooted in the word. And, and that's what we're talking about developing is roots. And so it says, therefore, we, not, we walk not by sight, but by faith. So there's this understanding when you're in your Bible, as oh, I'll just have to explain, like currently, I don't know how much stuff is in me. I just began to talk and it begins to come out. Uh, it almost, I was all worried back here. I'm like, man, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm the kind of guy I look in, my, in the mirror and then I step away. I don't know what I look like. That's me. I don't know. So I, I've got all this information in me. I don't, I don't know. And I just open my mouth and it begins to come out. Okay. Um, but certainly when we're dealing with this, that, that we're talking about faith, we walk by faith, uh, by, by faith and not by sight. It's like a blind man in a house. And so he's got all the furniture in his house and he's getting to know the house. That's you getting to know the word. We're being, we, we become acquainted to the word. And so as you come in contact with the word, you're feeling around. You say, oh, I didn't know that was over there. You walk over here and you're like, well, I didn't know that was over here. And, and, and little by little, one verse connects with another. When you do have verses that connect one with another, you have a solidified root. That root right there, at latitude, longitude, you say, wow, that's crazy. 
Man, these all this matches, and now you have a solid root. I'll give you an example. If we're talking about the, the Romans chapter 10, uh, 10 verse 9, it says there, it says there for uh, the, the latter part of it, that God raised Jesus from the dead. So who raised Jesus from the dead? God did. Everybody knows that. And if you go to Romans 8, 11, it says the same spirit, paraphrased, the same spirit that lives in you is the same spirit that lives in me. It's the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. Oh, wait a second. Didn't we just say it was God? So, so we have to understand that. And then there's another verse that says, if you are who you say you are, well, show us a sign, show us a miracle. He says, well, I'll tear down this temple and I will raise it up. Who's going to raise it up? Jesus. So there's your, there's your Trinity. Okay. And so when you're, that was something, I, that's a good thing. I guess the Lord just reminded me. <laughs> so, so when we look at the actual, um, when we look at the Bible itself, it's, it's as if to take a little boy and you take him outside at night. He's five. And you say, you see the stars? He says, I see the stars. That's every, every Christian when they say, yeah, uh, you know. But the thing about it is when you look into the sky, you see all these stars. And then dad comes and dad says, do you see that over there? And, and where? Right over there. And he connects the dots. And when he connects those dots, then he says, that's a big dipper over there. You see, that's a little dipper over there. And, and then he's like, oh, I didn't know that. And so now the kid knows that. Who connects the dots? The Holy Spirit. When you're in your Bible, do know there is revelation. And who gives it? You know, of course, uh, it, well, uh, I could quote all that. I don't want to get all puffed up. I feel like I'm all puffing up when I'm quoting stuff. Oh, he says not to. Okay, so, <laughs> so, okay, so they approach, they approach uh, the disciples and they say, well, Jesus says, well, who do they say I am? And some say that you're the John the Baptist and others say you're Elijah. He says, but who do you say I am? He says, well, uh, you're the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. And then Jesus says, verily, truly, I tell you, Simon Peter, for your flesh and blood did not reveal this, but my Father from above. So we have to understand all revelation comes from the Father. Anything I'm revealing to you all came from God. And when you're in your Bible, God's going to reveal things. He has their stuff that's hidden. And we could talk about all that. I could give you a bunch of, it's crazy, the amount of stuff uh, we're talking about. For instance, you guys all know that the rock is Jesus Christ. You know that? Uh, the honeycomb is Jesus Christ. I don't know if you knew that. But anyways, there's a lot of stuff. When you begin to read, it, it goes deeper than what you think. Okay, so now we, we, we developed this, the root system. We're going to go really quickly. I, I don't know what time it is, but uh, okay. All right. So without the roots, uh, the sun will come, it'll wither, it'll scorch, it'll die, it won't make it. All right. So the idea, we want to make it, right? Uh, Paul talks about it like this. He says, uh, well, I think we're just reading today. Uh, Jesus says, he who endures until the end uh, will, will, inherit, uh, sal- the, the, will, will inherit the eternal life. And then Paul talks about it like running a race. So if we were to go from here to Dallas with no water, we wouldn't make it. So where do we get our water from? Well, we're going to get it from our root system. Get good roots and we're going to make it. Don't become dehydrated. And Jesus says it this way. Our Father who art in heaven is give us our daily bread. So we're supposed to be in there, right? And so we're supposed to be in there daily. And so as this begins to happen, it's very important that we realize this, that what the Lord revealed to me, that, that when we talk about the soil, the soil is the law. That's very important. The law. And so we talk about a pizza pie, okay? So this is the law. And we have something that's missing. That, that that was missing uh, was the lamb, the ultimate sacrifice. When Christ comes, he, he becomes the ultimate sacrifice. And what does he do? He fulfills the law. And after the fulfillment of the law, then there's no death that's required. Right? Well, that's God. It's not from me. Okay. So, so this right here, this law, I'm just going to go ahead and circle that kind of like that. We'll put that there. You see, that's a heart. Okay. So, well, well, okay. So, so this, this, this seed that was over here, that seed is uh, everything that Christ did on the cross. Everything he did. This is Christ's works. It's not by works, so that no man may boast. So when your heart is soft, you're acknowledging that it's not me. I give up. I give up. It's, I, I have enough of this. I'm taking what Christ did. And you're acknowledging that there's no way to heaven except for through Jesus Christ and what he did. And so that's a softened heart right here. So we have a soft heart. And unless we have a soft heart, then the seed will not introduce itself. It won't have roots. The sun will come. It'll scorch it. It'll die. We'll make it. Okay. So that's going to be very essential that we have a solid root system. And that pretty soon, if we go to Proverbs chapter, it's been a while, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. 
It says, for the tongue has the power to give life and death, and those who love of it will eat of its fruit. Uh, okay, so when we're dealing with that, that fruit that it's talking about, the tongue, is in fact, this, well, I'll have to explain really quickly. So if we, if we talk about the rock, out of the rock comes the Holy Spirit, comes the water, right? I don't know if you guys are aware of that. But we talk about the rock, which is Christ. And then we have the lamb, out of the lamb comes the blood, right? So... So out of this seed of righteousness, Jesus is our seed of righteousness, out of that seed comes this plant, and that plant is the Holy Spirit. And now we have fruit. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and it's displayed on the tongue. It's intertwined on the tongue, and that's where we talk about the tongue has the power to give life and death. Life is through the Holy Spirit, right? Life is in the blood. The Holy Spirit is the blood. And so we talk about this. It talks about, uh, if we go to Romans, we'll go to Romans really quickly, 2, 28 through 29. It says, who is the true Jew? Is it one that is one outwardly? He says, Paul says, certainly not. It is one that is one inwardly. And he's talking about the heart. He's talking about this here. He says, it's one that has the circumcision of the heart. Well, by the Holy Spirit. So this tongue right here, if we talk about it, it says that the word... Well, I'll just say it because it's long. The word is uh, alive and active, and it's sharper than a two-edged sword, right? And so when we're dealing with that, it cuts. It cuts deep, right? It circumcises. And so with this, what happens, that Holy Spirit in this circumcises the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. And, and, and as this begins to happen, we begin to circumcise. Out of the heart come the evil desires, you see? And this is equivalent to the thorns that choke up. These are basically, if we could talk about it, these are outward extensions, desires of the heart. Outward desires. You want to desire the money? It talks about those who desire the things of the world and wealth and all that. And so these things choke up the plant and it doesn't bear fruit. That's all idolatry, if we could make sense out of it. You cannot serve two masters. You either love one, you hate the other. So it's very essential that if we're going to have a revival, uh, if, if, if there's going to be fruit, uh, there, there's got to be understanding on money. We cannot, cannot serve two masters. There will not be any fruit. See, what the Lord st states there, he says he's coming for the wheat. All right? He's coming for the wheat, and he's not coming for the seed. That's the problem. So there's a lot of seed that's been scattered all over the churches. They're ready. They're nice and ready. But the, the idea is that the pastors keep telling them that they're born again, but they have no root, and they're just a seed, and they're just sitting there. They're dormant. And when Christ comes, it's whose fault's going to be that? Yeah, we've got to we've got to get the word out there. Well, from right now, it's it's I'm just now delivering some responsibility to all y'all, even though you don't know it. Um, <laughs> it says uh, it says there. See, I, just so you know, I haven't touched my medical books in three months. Uh, I have the fear of the Lord. So what's what's going on? I've been waiting for doors to open to preach this message. You're receiving it here today, but um, it says to whom much has been given much will be expected another in that same luke chapter 12 it states there it says for who is my wise and faithful servant to whom i've given a portion of meat for due season this is the meat for due season um we're talking about a harvest here and uh everybody needs to know why it's not functioning the reason it's not functioning is because people are not they don't they're unaware of the sword of the spirit that's one it says be dressed and ready with your candles lit for you know not the hour when the master will return. That dressed, if you go further down into Luke 12, it said, had that man known at what hour his house would have been broken into, the house would not have been broken into. So what was he supposed to be doing? Guarding. How do you guard? You got to have your armor. And so we talk about that guarding. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, of course, talks about the body armor. And so we're supposed to be guarding. We're supposed to be dressed and ready. And so that's going to be part of it. Okay, so that is the sword of the Spirit. Very important. What is the sword of the Spirit? Well, if you want to know what the sword of the Spirit is, you'd have to go over to the desert with Christ. So if you wanted to be a billionaire, what would you do? You'd go hang out with a billionaire. you say, okay, what's he do? I want to do that. And you'd be a billionaire. Well, we'd hope so. But with Christ, if you want to learn how to defend yourself against evil spirits, it says, for we battle not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits and principalities. Just so we can make any sense out of this, nobody here could ever be my enemy or your own enemy. ISIS could break in here and cut our heads off and they won't be our enemy. You got that? So we have to, we have to, we've got to be praying for them. And so it's very essential we realize these things and uh, 
That, and, you know, we have the right to defend ourselves, but essentially we do have to know that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits and principalities. So this, this, this sword here that we're talking about, I'll go ahead and mention it really quickly. So Christ is in the desert. He hasn't had food for 40 days and 40 nights. And so there he is, and Satan tempts him. He says, you know, turn this uh, stone into bread. And in doing so, Christ, what does he do? How does he defend himself? Well, he speaks, said, for it's not by bread alone that a man lives, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. He, he quotes scripture. That's this exact thing. He had it in his heart. You got to memorize this stuff. Out of the heart speaks the mouth. Out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth. And so that's that sword. That's how you're going to do it. It's not just by prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 also talks about prayer. We do need to pray. I'm not saying that. And, and there's more body armor. But I am emphasizing in this right here that uh, there's more than just prayer. We can actually speak to these evil spirits. It's very important to know that uh, you have these thoughts. And you say, man, why did I think that? This is crazy. You might be at the table. It's happened to me before. You know, I had like a pencil and I was like, ooh, I just thought of stabbing that person. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Dad was like, I wouldn't tell anybody that. But I'm just saying, I'm a Christian man. And I'm like, where did that come from? Yeah. And, and so we got to realize that that's not you. It's an influence. And so when this begins to take place, you've got to learn that you have the sword of the spirit. What's the sword of the spirit? Well, memorize what Christ did in the, in the desert and then use that. All right. For it's not by bread alone that a man lives, but every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And, my, and then you could follow up. And my father says that you're the father of all lies. And I'm not your son. I'm not your slave. I'm the son of the living God. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now be quiet. Just like that, it's a dog. He, he's like a dog that tries to run up, jump in your lap. And then you slap him, and he has to go. I couldn't do a slap. Yeah. And so he goes, and he lays down, and then he comes back. And he does it again, and you quote it again. Just like that. And you can also, if you wanted to follow through, in the desert, he also quotes the other scripture was, which is, away from me, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. You could follow up. And I do not serve two masters. I only serve my father. I'm not your slave. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, what you're doing when you're speaking all of that, just so it can make any sense, you're circumcising that heart. These are the desires. These are, these are all these evil desires. They're influences. And so, anyways, so that's a very essential thing that we realize. Part of that dressed and ready with your candles lit for you know not the hour when the master will return is in, is in fact the sword of the spirit. Got to use it. Got to. Okay. I'm now going, what's today's date? The 12th. Okay. So the Lord got a hold of me mid-May, something like that. And so I'm now going to be 10 months, uh, not abstinent, but celibate as a priest, right? Until the Lord brings me a, a wife, that's how it's going to be. But here's what I'd like to say. When, 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 the, uh, when, when Jesus was in the desert, he basically exemplified everything from flesh down fits in with this that we're talking about with the sword of the spirit had he held his breath for 40 days and 40 nights that had been crazy you know but he went with the flesh and he did not have food for 40 days and 40 nights and so in doing so everything from flesh we're talking pornography we're talking about sleeping around all this stuff drugs heroin everything you can think of of application of the word and uh, it's very important. If we talk about the wise man that built his house on the rock, he is the one that heard the word, and what did he do? And he put it to practice. And then we also have the fool that built his house on the sand. What, what happened with him? He heard the word too. Faith comes by hearing. So this is, the, this is the church member who was in his Bible too. And he kept falling, and he kept saying, I don't understand this. Why do I keep falling? What's going on? This Christian walk ain't working for me. And he's just a seed. There's no fruit. There's no fruit coming up. There's nothing coming out. And so when we're dealing with that, you've got to use this sort of spirit. Else we're going to keep failing. And, and you're going to be wondering what's going on. I don't understand this. It's not working for me. This Christian walk. And you keep praying and you keep praying. But what's going on is you're having influences by evil spirits. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll move forward. I'd like to... Oh, well, I might as well continue. So we talk about this. We talk about this, uh, this house built on the sand. It keeps falling. It falls. Okay. So what, what beats against the house? The winds, the floods, the rains. Okay. So these are the temptations on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't want to break them. It, it, it moves. It, it shakes us, right? And, and you have this, these things going on every day. 
It's all these influences like, man, I sure had a bad day today. We'll speak. Use the word of God. Rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ, and you'll be set free. Okay? And, and the truth will set you free. Okay? And that's the truth that comes out of your mouth. We're to be truth defenders. That's the name the Lord gave me is we introduce truth into our heart, and then we, re, we, um, we defend it. When, when the Lord says this, he says, keep my commandments. You've heard it? Keep in the Greek is to guard. He says, keep my commandments. But the commandments are rhema. We just talked about, I'll write it out. Command, we'll put commands. So the commands go in the heart. When it goes in there, we're to, he says, keep my commands. If you love me, keep my commands. If you love me. And so we're to be loving him. And so we're to be guarding. And that goes in our heart. And so we, def, we, we guard with our tongues, with our mouths. The spoken word against who? Evil spirits, not humans. Evil spirits is very essential. We realize who the enemy of God is, fallen angels. None of us, <laughs> we're not supposed to be after one another. We're to love one another. We're to pray for our, our enemies and uh, love those who persecute, love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And so anyway, so that's going to be a very essential, uh, important thing. Um, but I'm going to, I guess from here, I guess since I've already mentioned the sword of the spirit, I have to give you a firm warning. Um, it turns out that there was a there was a strong man. He was guarding a house, and uh, with his with all of his weapons, his armor, and a stronger man overtook him, and he plundered all of his weapons. And it says that this man left his house, uh, that, that the, the evil spirit left the the house into the wilderness to find no rest. And when it did, it then returns to find the house nice and clean. And when it does, it brings seven spirits worse than itself. All right. So, and then it says the person is worse off than they were before they started. So the point that we'd have to make is that when you, when you rebuke Satan, as you are, you better be ready to defend this house. The house is the temple. The temple is the tabernacle. That's us. In us is the, is the, the, the Holy Spirit. But we've got to have that. It's the, man, the, 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 the wise man is the one that heard the word and then put it to practice. This is one of those examples of putting it to practice, guarding the house. Um, but uh, so what, what I'm mentioning is if, if, for instance, you stop your alcohol, let's say for two years, you've been putting the word to practice and everything, and, and all of a sudden you get all depressed, something happens, you crawl back in your bottle. You're going to be worse off than you were before you started. You've heard of these people. Something happens, a divorce or something, or something bad, and they crawl back in the bottle and they're just like worse, worse off. Than, so make sure that if you do put this to, to, to practice, the Lord gave me a firm warning in that, that you don't go back as a dog to its vomit, okay? So don't be going back. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. I'm going to flip this upside down, okay? So this, so yeah, the Lord had me, I was studying medical, and the Lord took me here, and we have, these are ovaries, right? Okay, thank you. We're just going to flip this heart around, and now we have a womb. It's this womb here. And so we have the actual law. That's the egg. And then we have, as before, we were talking about the seed. Well, in this case, it says there, before Mary and Joseph came together, Mary was found with the Son of the Holy Ghost. She was impregnated. So we talk about that's going to be the seed. That's the seed of righteousness. That's what Christ did on the cross. And so anyways, it's the same example just in the womb. And when they come together, they, they actually it's implanted just as a plant. It's implanted. And there's something I failed to mention before. With the seed, there's a process. It's called uh, imbibement. It comes from the Latin beber, which means to drink. So you, you, you can't imbibe a seed. A, si a seed has to imbibe as to drink so it's very important uh, we have to search for him god says if you'll search for me with all your heart i'll let you find me so that's very important we need to be searching for him daily you have to develop all these roots and um anyways so now now that we have this we have a, a the beginning of a product it goes embryo then fetus and of course afterwards baby comes out but anyways it's implanted once this thing it begins to grow it begins to grow it begins to drink just like the seed was drinking it too drinks it, it drinks amniotic fluid it begins to swell now the important thing is not the root system as was the the, the seed but actually uh, the bronchial tree okay we have to have a good respiratory tract if the, if the respiratory tract is not fully developed then the baby won't survive outside the womb okay and so what we do in the medical, we give them steroids. But anyways, 
I'm being puffed up. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, with this, now we have the baby begins to swell. <laughs> Are you smiling over there? So it begins to swell. It begins to grow. And what's the first thing that happens here? Well, we talk about water baptism. The water breaks. And there it is. It breaks. All right. And so I, and if we go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 6, it says, We are kings and priests in the, in, 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 to, to God and his Father. I'll just go ahead and mention that. So it's, it's for God and, and his Father. You heard that? That's going to be Revelation 1, 6. God and his Father. So in this, that's only in the King James Version, which I really like when it comes to the Trinity. Uh, God and his Father. So it's referencing Christ here. As Jesus, Jesus is God, and so, anyways, so it talks about us being kings and priests, in, in, in to God and His Father. And the first thing the baby is going to do when it comes down, it does something here. It, it crowns. That's what we talk about. It crowns, and and we have the water busting. It crowns. It comes out, and when it comes out, it's covered in the blood. Okay, and it takes its breath of life, right? And those lungs there, then it fills up, right? But there's one thing that the baby has. It needs to be fully delivered. And if this baby comes out and it's still got this, which is your umbilical cord, and then we're in trouble. It's got to be cut. You got to cut it. How do you cut it? Well, it's the same manner over here. We're talking about the sword of the spirit. It says you cannot serve two masters. You either love one and you'll hate the other. And, and it says if you sin, then you're a slave to sin. And no slave has a permanent place in the house of God. We have to very, be very aware of this, that if you're, if you're serving two masters, we're in trouble here. So the way to do this, the way to sever that, is by this particular sword of the Spirit. It's with, uh, with uh, the authority of God speaking. Um, you do it by prayer too. I'm not saying this is the addition to what right now the church isn't functioning in. It has to be spoken, a spoken word, you know. Um, Okay, so that has to be severed. And once it's severed, guess what happens? Well, then it, it, has, it goes to the mom's refuge, and it goes where the mom tells it to go. You know, it, it's like the wind. Those who are born of God, they're like the wind. You do not know where they go and where they come from. Same thing. So the mom is now going to take this baby and walk it around, and wherever it, mommy tells it to go, it's going to go. That's the church, by the way. That's mom. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it drinks milk. All right? So there's your, your news source. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, we'll see what's next. So we just need to understand we cannot serve two masters. I think that's very important. Thank you. Cool. cool. Um, if we go, if you, if you, uh, if we wanted to understand love. See, here's the thing with Revelation. You can change one word for another. That's how the Revelation develops, uh, understanding that. And, and it says there, it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Everybody knows that. Who's your Lord? Jesus. Jesus is the word. Okay? So I'm not talking about committing idolatry with the book. That's not what I'm talking about. But the word itself introduced into your heart and applied. That's what we're talking about. To love the, to love the word of God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's very important. So when you're doing this, you're actually, to make sense out of it, you're in God's refuge. He's your provider. He's your, he's your protector. And so when we're doing that, we're actually loving ourselves. It says here, if you go to uh, Proverbs 19.8, it says, He who finds wisdom loves himself or loves his own soul. So we're talking about how do you want to love yourself. It says love your neighbor as you love yourself. But what does wisdom do? If you go to Proverbs chapter 9, it says wisdom has built her house. She's honed up her seven pillars. And you follow through, and it says that she calls out to the city, those who are simple, come and eat of my bread and drink of my wine. And that's where Christ can weaken the Bible, just so we can make sense. The Bible cover to cover is truth all the way through. It's like a Sudoku puzzle. It all connects cover to cover. And so if it does say bread and wine, that's talking about Christ. Christ says, do you not know the scriptures speak of me? He says, you're searching for life. I am that life. I am the truth, the life, and the way. And that's what we're talking about. So if you go to Proverbs chapter 9, you, will, you can read into that. Another addition of that, uh, if you go down, I think it's 19, 917, it says, bread eaten in secret is good. So stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is good. So it's very important when you're in your Bible. Who says that, by the way? It, it's 
spirit of folly. So when we get to heaven, there will be no fools. You just need to know that. There are five virgins. They're wise. And there's other five virgins. They're fools. They were both waiting on the master to return. And so it's very important. Those are the, That's the church. That's the church. Both of them were waiting. They were both, you know. But uh, so we got to make sure that we realize that the fools were left outside. So we, how do you become wise? Proverbs 2, 6 says, well, we can go to James as well. He says, ask for wisdom and the Lord gives liberally. And then in Proverbs 2, 6, it says, for the Lord gives wisdom. And then it says, and, out of, and then out of, his, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Um, and then if you go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 through 4, it, it, Paul, is, he's exhorting. He says, he, my desire is that you have the fullness of understanding of the mystery of God, who is Christ, in whom all treasures of knowledge and wisdom lie. So the wisdom comes from Christ. He's, he's the hidden mystery of God. So if you want wisdom, that's where it's going to come from, from the word of God. You want to be wise? Put it in there. Put the word of God in you. And as you begin to read, you're actually, you began to feed and you're putting it in your heart. Okay. So these are very important things. Um, the other thing I, I'm sure you guys, well, maybe we'll go two places. Um, so this is a very important thing. Uh, if you, if you, if you, if you've read the gospels there, I haven't read them all, but, uh, but the Lord, he begins to talk. He says, you've heard it said, but I tell you this. You heard the law state, but I tell you this. What the Lord is, he's the word of God. And as the word of God, every word has a definition. So he brought the definition. Not only was he the word of God, but he was the definition of God too. He being, bring, brought clarity. So if you've heard it this way, I tell you it's this way. And so he be, began to separate back and forth. And um, if I told somebody in here that I love them and, and, and they understood that in a sexual sense, well, then there would be a misunderstanding because that's not the way I would intend it. Okay. So we have to very, we, ha we need understanding. Without understanding, we're in trouble. So this here would be, to give, give a, a, an example of that, um, that would be to say this is a fire extinguisher. And I told everybody, I said, a fire is coming. I say, here, this is going to put it out. And I leave. I said, don't worry. So put the fire out. And I, I go out and you guys can't leave, right? And the fire comes, burns up. And all of a sudden we're in heaven. You're saying, what, what's going on, man? Yeah, I burned up. But what happened when, it, when the fire came, you took the thing and you threw it in the right in the fire and you got burned up and, and we're in heaven. You're just like, man, that, that thing burned me up. Well, you're supposed to pull the pin, squeeze and sweep. You didn't know that. You didn't understand that. Without understanding, it's just knowledge. We have to have understanding. So it's very important that we have the understanding part of it. Um, and maybe I should... Really, okay, so if we go to... If you go to Proverbs 8.13, here's one of the misunderstandings that we have. Proverbs 8.13... Um, what it states in Proverbs 8.13 8, is that uh, it says the fear of the Lord. If, if, you go to, if you go to 9, if you go to Proverbs 9.10, it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're talking about wisdom. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So how do we have fear of the Lord? Well, you have to understand he has the keys to heaven and hell. You're not supposed to be fearing a fallen angel. You fear God. He's in charge. He's, it's, so that's who we're going to be fearing. But then it says, that's the fear of the Lord. And we go to Proverbs 8, 13. It defines there. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Okay, so we're going to write that. Okay, so maybe you've heard it said, <laughs> hate the sin, not the sinner. Okay, so if, the, if Jesus was here, I feel what he would say. He was speaking through me. Don't do that. Don't, if you're going to hate it, hate your, hate your own sin. Don't look at someone else because hate is as if you hate a brother. What, what happens? You guys know? You're a murderer. So let's just pretend for a second that I, I say, okay, well, this is, this is your sin. I'm going to put it right there. I tell you, don't move. All right? And I get this bow and arrow out, and I'm like, okay, don't move. And I accidentally miss that apple, and I hit you. You know? So that's what happens when you look at someone else's sin and you're like, oh, I'm going to hate your sin. I might hate my brother, and, and no murderer has, can inherit the kingdom of God. So the idea in this is that we're supposed to go ahead and hate the sin in our own lives. You see, it says, you hypocrites, first remove the log out of your own eye, and then remove the speck out of your brother's eye. So here's what happens. When you start out, 
and you have sin in your life, a, we'll, we'll talk about a specific sin. If you have a specific sin in your life, it looks like a log. It's very difficult. Okay? But when we go to Christ and he gives us wisdom to overcome that, and now you look at your brother, he says, man, I got this log in my eye. You say, no, it's not a log. It's a speck. Here, let me help you with that. Right? So with wisdom, we can actually help one another. We can help a brother or sister. And it's very important uh, that we realize that. So the, the idea is that we, we get set free and then we help others. Okay? Uh, we're supposed to be pulling, pulling each other out of the pit. We're supposed to be discipling one another. Helping. The problem is a lot of us that have information, but we don't have time. But, okay, but we're supposed to be, that's how you're going to love your neighbor as you love yourself. First, you, you go through the word of God and he's going to remove this log out of your eyes so that you can see, so that you can go to your neighbor and help them have a relationship with God through the word of God. So they can have a relationship through the Bible. If that makes any sense? Kind of? Oh, cool. Okay. Um, let me see. Where to? I might uh, cheat. I got some. While we were here in the service, I was like, maybe I should write some of this down. Um, so we'll talk about fluency. The fluency of the eyes and the ears. So we're talking about, uh, if you go to Mark chapter, it's Mark chapter 4, um, Matthew 13, either one. It talks about this parable of the sower and the seed. And so we're dealing with this, this parable of the sower and the seed. It says there, it says everything is locked away in a secret. The mysteries of the kingdom. Their form is in a parable form. So that those who have eyes to see, they, although, they, they have, although they can see, they don't perceive. Having ears to hear, they don't understand. Unless they repent and turn to God. So it's very important when we're talking about that repentance. As you repent, you can actually, all these mysteries are unlocked. That's where we talk about revelation, by the way. When the Lord began to give me all this revelation, I began to throw stuff away. I was taking Ritalin, and then this brother over here, he, was, he spoke against that. He was like, no. Nah. So I threw all my Ritalin away. Okay? Never went back to it. All right? And now you can see I, I – thanks. I had a bottle of alcohol. I was already walking right with the Lord, and I'd get, I'd get drunk every one – I guess like every three months by myself. Nobody knew it. What happened, I'd get real stressed out, and I'd serve myself some heavy drinks. And that was a reset button. And the next day I was like, ooh, that was good. But it's not good. There is no, that's not the way out of this thing, okay? And so I threw that away. And I had shirts that had alcohol on it. I thought, you know what? Who cares? But that's what I thought before. And then, but when the Lord got a hold of me, I started throwing everything I could think of, anything that resembled anything that is, that is promoting any kind of sin or is a stumbling block for another, I began to throw all that away. I began to turn to God. To repent is to turn to God. To, to, okay, turn to God. And when you turn to God, the other thing what we talk about, it's actually uh, changing your mind. There's a mind change, a change of, I was going to put a triangle here, that's what we do, but that's chemistry. Change of mind. And we're, what we're doing is we're having uh, the mind of Christ in this. Okay. So it's very important that as you, as you get in your word, uh, it says, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. And so this is what it looks like. Ouch. You have uh, a sheep, uh, that's you and me, and we're following God, and, and there's thorns and thistles because you got off the path, okay? And so as, as Christ is calling you, he's removing these thorns and thistles as long as you let him. It's like one of those dogs that are jumping, and he's got to let him take that. If not, it's going to hurt, right? So as, as you walk with Christ, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, and as we follow him, he, he removes this if we allow him to. And what we're doing in that is, if we can make any sense... I'll first explain. If you don't allow Christ to remove these thistles and these thorns, uh, when you go to lay down at night, it's going to hurt you. And you're just like, oh, ah, I can't rest. And so there's many times we, we can't rest at night. You know? So let God have our, our things. And, and so the other thing is when, when we're amongst other sheep, you rub up against them. And it hurts them. Ah, meh, right? And so you're like, who, meh. And you're like, ah, who was that? Was that you or was that me? And you're like, man, I don't understand this. This is kind of crazy stuff, right? So you got to let God remove these things from you. And um, what, you, what he's doing is he's removing the lie. When we're born in the flesh, we're lie defenders. 
and the truth is not in him. You've heard that multiple times, and the truth is not in him. If you hate a brother, then you're a murderer, and the truth is not in you. The truth, if you don't have truth, you're, you're a liar. So we're, we defend the lie. You defend the lie. So many, many today might even defend the lie of the fact that, uh, well, the Bible, I believe everything it says in there. But I think we came from monkeys. If you said that, then you're a liar. You're calling God a liar. You're defending a lie that's in your heart. And so we came from dust. That's where we came from. All right. And so Eve came from a rib, from Adam's rib. So we do not defend the lie. We defend the truth. And when it's approached, we have our opportunity to defend the truth. We've got to have the truth put in us, and then we defend it. Right now, I guess it's been since 1960, uh, somewhere around there, I believe that they began talking about all this with the monkey nonsense. Um, but uh, we've got to learn. The science has got to change. We've got to change. We're, we're <laughs> here in the United States, we have a large population of Christians. But anyways, um, so when we're dealing with this repentance, uh, it says, for they have ears to hear, and they do not, hear, they do not understand. And they have eyes to see, but they don't, they don't uh, perceive unless they were to turn to God. That's uh, hopefully I, maybe I should start over. I don't want to lose everybody. So everything in that Bible, everything in the word of God is, is locked away in parable form. Christ says, unless, how, how do you expect to understand the rest if you can't understand this parable? And that's when he's talking about this particular thing. And he says, even though they have eyes to see, they do not perceive. Even though they have ears to hear, they do not understand unless they repent and turn to God. That's what we're talking about. Turning to God is switching the lie for the truth. And as you're reading, as you're going through the word of God and he begins to speak, then you begin to believe. That's your faith because we're born in the opposite. And so as you walk, we walk by faith. And so that, and in that, then we're, we're switching that lie for that truth. And then we defend the truth. And we defend it with the truth, the spirit of truth. Okay. Um, and so what the Lord, I'm, I'm going to pause right there. What the Lord shared with me is that when we talk about, um, we, everybody's heard about that being fluent with your, fluent in Spanish. You have bro broken Spanish, fluent Spanish. Same thing with your, the Lord has revealed to me that that could be with your ears and your eyes. Okay. And so there, when we talk about proficiency of a language, you have the writing, you have the reading, you have the hearing, and you have the spoken. So when we talk about that, when we're dealing with that, that, that repentance that goes on right there, it turns out the Holy Spirit, when he speaks, he speaks fluently. He doesn't speak brokenly, but we, we hear broken. And so we grieve the Holy Spirit with different, de, we, when we defend the lion. And, and so anyways, in doing so, it's very important that, um, that we acknowledge things. Um, that that is the Lord. I'll give you an example. So uh, Dustin the other day said to me, he said, listen, um, I'd like to go ahead and, and, and there's been a lot of crazy things that have happened. <laughs> I'm just giving you one example since, since the Lord's gotten a hold of me. But the other day he was in my kitchen. He's discipling me. Okay. So is Tyler. And anyways, he's in there and, and he was like, all right, so remind me of the helmet, which we're about to talk about. And so we're talking and everything. I said, listen, bro, here's the thing. If you don't put this to practice, I was fixing to tell him, if you don't put this to practice, you're like the, the, the fool who built his house on the sand. And before I can even finish, oh, 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 it's like, what's wrong with you, bro? He's like, dude, and I have a, a stove over the, and I have a little clock right there, and I have Mazzola oil. It slid two inches, and he freaked out. And I was like, all right, well, let me keep talking. He was like, no, you don't understand. And I was like, okay, I'll acknowledge it was weird. Okay, what do you want? He was like, dude, that was, was weird. Did you just slid two inches while you were talking? And I was like, well, it's got a little grease up there. I got to clean that. Anyways, so we look at it. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, get over it, man. But it's, it's yeah, it's 650. It's 650. And I said, I don't know why this happened, but I was just like, well, which book? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But he said Luke. So we go to 649 in Luke, and guess what it states? It, 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 the, the, the fool is the one who does not hear the word of God. He, uh, he hears the word of God, he, he doesn't put it to practice. It's like the man who built his house on the sand, and when he did, when the winds and the rains and the floods beat against the side of the house, the house fell. Just right there, when I was fixing to speak, I, that little connection right there, to acknowledge that that was God in that very moment, in that kitchen, that's being fluent, and you're acknowledging that's not a coincidence, that's God, right? And so in that, when you begin to do this, the Lord begins to show himself, he begins to reveal himself. What's in mystery form begins to become revealed to you. And you're like, whoa, God's really, all this is happening. That old lady that walked in front of me, that's no coincidence. I've been praying for that divine appointment. And here I would lay in her hand on her hip. And she had a hip problem. And what, what this, you know, so anyways, um, that's very important. What time is it? 
he said. 10 o'clock? Wow. Okay, so, so okay, so he, he, I, I'll, I'll wrap it up. This is very important. No, no, you're good. I'll, I'll wrap it up. So it says there, it says, be dressed and ready with your candles lit. So what we're talking about is being dressed. It's very important when we're talking about uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 28 through, to, through 29. It says there, it says, we talked about the, uh, who's the true Jew? Is it one that is one outwardly? He says, definitely not. It's one that is one inwardly with the circumcision of the heart. Is, is it one who searches for the approval of man? Certainly not. It's the one that searches for the approval of God. So when we're dealing with that, it's very important. There's another component. It's called the helmet of salvation. So that's what we're going to talk about. And that right there, I'll tell you, uh, my brother, he's, he's a doctor. I'm a doctor from Costa Rica there. And he was coming last summer, and he said to me, he said, hey, bro, you know what your problem is? I said, what's that? He said, bro, you don't need a Ritalin. You don't need it, you know? He, I, he, I guess he just figured it out. <laughs> I was already set free. But he was like, bro, what's going on is you're very depressed. Mom and dad's divorce. The whole thing, all that, that really messed with our heads. And I'm on a depressant, and I think you need to be on one too. I think you're depressed. I said, bro, I'm not depressed. I, I have anxiety, but I'm not depressed. And he just pushed and pushed. And I said, listen, if you're going to come and help me, give me the anxiety medication. That's what I want. So he goes, and he looks all in Costa Rica. They're sold out for this specific one that I wanted. I said, all right, well, go ahead and give me your antidepressant. And I told God, I said, God, if you're going to give me wisdom over this, give me wisdom so I can share with others. And don't let that come through. Well, my brother shows up later, says, sorry, bro, we don't have any. They're sold out. I said, it's okay, man. And so later then, the Lord shared this with me. I was there in my living room. It's on my, on my phone, and I'm, I'm there. And, and, and all, I'm studying for my exam at the time. And then all of a sudden, I began writing stuff like crazy. I'm like, what's all this? <laughs> all that enormous amount of information. And I was like, God, I know that's from you, but what does that have anything to do with the Bible? Anyways, I get back to my studies. I was like, I better keep studying. Four hours later, Todd White is preaching live. And that same stuff that's on my whiteboard is coming out of his mouth. I was like, what? He's live, you know? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa this is crazy. So, so here it is. But the Lord also connected that to be the helmet of salvation. And so... With the helmet of salvation, it's very important that we realize, even though we don't realize it, we judge one another. Okay, so currently, I'm judging you, you're judging me. Okay, and so judgment actually is scoring and grading. So it's a zero to 100. So it turns out God already scored us. He already graded us on the cross. He gave us a 100. It's written in the For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life, right? And then there's the Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, which we just talked about. It says, for we are saved by grace, through faith, not as a result of ourselves. It is a gift from God. Remember, it's a gift, uh, not by works so that no man may boast. So we have to realize it's a 100. It's, it's not because of anything you've done. He gave it to everybody, okay? So it's very important that we realize that. And when you're in the presence of someone, they're going to try to take you 100. You got to know that. They're going to come up to you. And they're going to be like, you know what? I'll give you an 80. I'll give you a 60. And they walk away and you're like, what? You know, and it says you're a slave to the one that you're obedient to. So all of a sudden you become a slave to that person. Just making sense out of that. So don't let anybody take your 100. Okay, I don't know if I can get everybody to say you can't have my 100. That's right, you can't have my 100 either. And uh, so it's very important when we're in the presence of someone, know they're going to try to take your 100. Don't let them have it. Uh, this is what the Lord shared with me. So he explains things in different ways, but it's as if I was taking a bag of potatoes and I'm going to go throw in the dumpster. And God's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to throw this in the dumpster. It's got bad potatoes on the bottom. And God said, are you kidding me? Dude, I, I prayed I paid for that with all the blood on the cross. I paid for that. Don't, I, mean, I plan on cutting out all the bad parts. I plan on using all the good parts. Don't be throwing that away. And so that's the church today. The church is actually throwing bags of potatoes away. You see some guy with a big beard and I don't know, maybe smoking weed over there, sitting on the side of the corner. And you say, that guy's not worth it. And you grade him and you give him a 30 and you don't walk up to him. And God wants him to know that he's been paid for. And that love that God has for him, he wants, he, God wants the, that guy to know, hey, I love that man. He needs to know it. But he's not worthy enough. The church says, I, you know, I, don't, I don't think so. Somebody else will get him. Or you got some woman in a skirt. Everybody's checking her out. Look at that. How many people are praying for her? She walks by. You know, so very important. We've got to re realize we've got to grade people with the correct. We've got to grade righteously. If God gives them a 100, we too give a 100. Okay. Um, okay, so the helmet of salvation, it's salvation. Salvation occurred at the cross. That's your John 3.16. All right. 
So with that, it turns out the helmet goes on the head. Where the head goes, the body follows. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking about, whatever uh, you put your head to, remember this, God loves you. Okay, so you begin to say, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. From the moment you get out of bed all the way throughout the day, you begin to say, God loves me, God loves me, God loves me. An antidepressant takes around six, four to six weeks to take its effect. Okay, so there's a restructure of the brain. Okay, so uh, Satan wants you to believe that God doesn't love you. That's what he wants you to believe. God's a good God, and he wants you to think God's an evil God. Okay, so it's very important that we realize God loves me, God loves me, God loves me, and when somebody's in the present, don't let them take you 100. Okay. Uh, and so in doing so, you should be able to focus on that. And, and let's make, let, me, let me make mention of that 100. That's the love of God for you. That's his grade. That's his approval. He proves of you. And you need to be satisfied with that 100. Be satisfied with his love. If you're not satisfied, Satan's going to get you. And you're going to be trying to get 100. I'll go to Dustin and be like, hey, Dustin, what would you think of me? And Dustin says, well, I'll give you an 80. I said, okay. You know, but no, I don't need his approval. I've already got God's approval. Okay. So, so that in Romans chapter 2, verse 28 through 29, I'm going to rephrase it. I'm going to rephrase it. So it, said, it says there, who's the true Jew? Know that we are Jews grafted in. Okay. So who's the true Jew? Is it one that is one outwardly? Certainly not. It is one that is one inwardly. By the circumcision of the heart, by the Holy Spirit, is it one that searches for the approval of man? Certainly not. It's the one that searches for the approval of God. So there's your helmet and there's your sword. Those are the two that it talks about with. So it's very important. Be dressed and ready with your candles lit, you know, for you know not the hour when the master will return. Um, so those two components, very important. Again, the relationship through the word, which is Jesus. We've got to have a relationship through the word with a repentant heart. Even, even outside of the Bible, when we're walking around, be, uh, it's, it's not, uh, we're not having magical thinking. You got to make certain of that. It's, it's not, it's, we're, if you see something, acknowledge it as being Christ if it is of Christ. You know, no one would be like, oh, yeah, that person has a purple shirt, so that means this or that and the other. Uh, we talk about that with, uh, I guess that's schizoid in medical. They kind of got some problems in their head. Don't, don't, if you're walking right with Christ, you know, God's going to reveal himself. And no, don't, don't be like, well, I don't want to be weird like that because uh, God, God reveals his, his way in different ways himself in different ways um i guess that's going to be and i guess so i don't i don't know if anybody would like to uh we could have you i don't know if anybody would like to come to the front we'll pray for that hunger and that thirst and that relationship with god and that repentant heart and i don't know if we can get people to come up here if you guys want to pray or we'll, we'll pray for y'all and and i don't know if somebody wants to grab the piano up there and